Hey Matsukor, Ryu here. So, Sonic the Hedgehog has been, uh, let's say, controversial as a game franchise. I mean, a lot of people loved them in the 90s. They're, a lot of gamers are still like, they're still making games. But this, uh, this idea of our video basically came from the fact that a couple days ago, Sega came up with a video on a Facebook, well I saw it on Facebook, where they had Gerard the Completionist and Aaron Eagle Raptor Hansen at, um, I think it was the Tokyo Game, not Tokyo Game Show, but it was some Japanese event. Now this doesn't make sense to me because Aaron Hansen hates Sonic. Okay, this dude is the biggest troll. So bringing someone who constantly talks garbage about your, uh, your franchise and just... And mind you, I've known people over the years who watch Game Grumps who actually takes his uh, word as gospel. Even though he sucks at games. Not gonna lie. Even, but even though his uh, sequelitis videos are like brilliant. Except for the Zelda one. The Zelda one sucks. But I want... But again, I want to talk about when did Sonic start sucking? Okay, so I'm going to give a brief history lesson. Okay, so... Obviously with, um... Okay, with, uh... The first game. Okay, obviously the first game had to start the franchise. Come on. There's a lot of Sonic that. Oh, I think this is it. Yeah. So, the first game came out. And... Okay. Looks like Yuji Giannaka's name is just... Under Programmer. But he's like... Um, he's like credited as the creator of the series. So I guess they didn't really have di uh, directors back then. But Sonic 1 was... It wasn't even really fast. It was more, um... Like, only the first stage was fast. And apparently the idea for the franchise came from the fact that he would play the first stage of Mario to see how fast he could get through it. And so... Yeah, Sonic was kind of a slightly faster platformer. Okay, and I personally don't think it's a good game, but... There are a lot of people who did, uh, who do, and I actually recently beat the game for the first time. So, on to Sonic 2. Okay. Now, this is something that, it, that kind of, um, uh, oh wow, this doesn't have anything. Well, this is, hold on, let's see, Agents? <laughs> I'm not paying for nothing. But, Okay, I don't know how to go back. But anyway, Sonic 2 um, kind of started... Um, it kind of started some... Uh, I guess you say franchise staples. For starters, one of, the, one of the franchise staples that kind of ended with um, Sonic 06. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, uh, I guess kind of Sonic 06. Not Sonic 06, but, um, Sonic and the, uh, Sonic... Mm, yeah, I think it was Sonic 06. Yeah, basically, introducing a new character every game, or, not every game, but, most games. And, um, it shortened the X from 3 to 2. And it balanced the uh, platforming. Yeah, so there would be like, because again, I mentioned how Sonic One was kind of slow in like every stage except for the first one. Like the stages in this one had, it had like stretches of land where you can go fast, and then like platforming, uh, platforming areas. So it was kind of, you know, 
it, it, it was balanced. And it also added multiplayer, which was cool. Now let's go to Sonic 3. Okay, so Sonic 3 adds a new character, um, Knuckles, and it was directed by Hirokazu um, Yasuhara. Kind of looks like a director on this one. Yeah, the game was actually supposed to be two games, but they had the, like, they were running out of time to make it, so they split it into two. Or, or it's supposed to be one game, but they split it into two. So the second half of the game is Sonic and Knuckles, and they. Um, like, Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the way to play it. It had quote unquote lock on technology, which was pretty cool at the time. When I was a kid, I had no idea that lock on technology existed. Yeah, all, all I know is I saw the box of the game and I saw that Tails was like in Sonic and Knuckles. And I'm like, how do you play Tails? But so, one of the things that was introduced was. The fact that characters had um, different abilities, like Tails could fly, Knuckles, where he could climb walls, glide, and um, what else? I think that was really it. And Sonic had the Insta Shield, which was called the Double Spin Attack in Japan. Except Double was like it was a W. Yeah, Sonic Generations calls it the Twin Spin Attack, which, whatever. But anyway, though, uh, the stages were bigger. It furthered that balance. They added stage transitions. Um, they added, like, Act 1 bosses, which was actually really cool. And the story was actually easy to follow. Like, because of the state transitions. Because one thing that was different between America and Japan was America and Japan had two entirely different stories. Okay? <sighs> so. Yeah, that. So this. Like. It was just a bigger game. And a lot of people consider this to be the best. Now, between, what was it, 94? Yeah, ni between 94 and 96. But I guess it was also earlier. Sega basically made a whole bunch of spin-offs. Okay, which I'm not going to get into, but it kind of kept the franchise alive. Because people were still playing Sonic 1, 2, and 3. And people who, at, who actually got the Sega the uh, Sega CD actually played Sonic CD um, during that time. But, um, yeah, lot, when I was growing up, people were saying that, that was the best game, but then I played it when it got released on Xbox, and I'm like, this game is terrible. So, Sonic, the next um, Sonic game was, of course, Sonic Adventure. And mind you, that was basically a four-year gap without main, uh, without um, a main entry. So this is Sonic's first main foray into 3D. I mean, I guess not really ex including Sonic 3D Blast, because people really like that one. So apparently, Sonic um, Adventure had three directors. Takashi Izuka, Manabu, Kusunoki, oh, CG for the movies, and Akinori Nishiyama. So, the reason it was called Adventure was because the game was more, uh, it was more story focused. Yeah, and it also starts um, more more um, serious staples. Well, a, well, one of the staples that they kind of got rid of was the fact that Eggman would try to control some sort of deity or monster 
and then the monster or deity or whatever would betray him. Okay, this is the first time that that's happened. And it brings back Amy Rose as a play, but this time she's a playable character. She's from Sonic CD, which I skipped over because, you know, doesn't really do anything. And it introduces two new characters, Big the Cat, which everyone hates. I mean, unless you're a fan of the Archie comics, and um, E-102 Gamma. Um, what does it introduce? Gameplay-wise... Uh, Gameplay-wise... Um, characters still have... Like, characters have new abilities. Such as Sonic has the homing attack, which replaces his... Um, Insta shield. Oh yeah, mind you, in Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic and um, Sonic 3, Insta shield was overpowered in my opinion. But yeah, the homing attack was to help Sonic. It was kind of needed for 3D because, you know, he um, homes in on enemies. Um, what else? And instead of like doing like different button combinations. Characters are relegated to two buttons now. Yeah, so instead of holding it down and pressing the jump button to do the spin dash, Sonic likes has a spin dash button. Um, yeah, everyone, everyone has their own story mode, like story, which kind of um, sucks because that means, for instance, if you're doing like Sky Chase, because you have to do it twice in the story. Like, for, like, you would have to do it four times. What I mean is, Sonic and Tails do Sky Chase, like, twice. But since you play Sonic and Tails separately, that means you have to do it four times. Yeah, which is terrible. Or, how uh, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles have to fight Chaos three times. Yeah, Chaos it makes up most of the bosses. I guess outside of Eggman. Yeah, you either, yeah, you're either fighting Eggman, Chaos, or another... Or another character. Yeah, everyone, everyone had a different um, goal in Sonic Adventure One, which was make, like Sonic's goal was to um, like make it to the gold ring, or not gold ring, but the uh, capsule. And this is before gold rings. Tails has to beat Sonic in the race. Nothing has to find the the. Um, the uh, Master Emerald Shards, Amy has to uh, make a tool uh, balloon to escape from Zero. Uh, Big the Cat has to catch Froggy, his pet frog, by fiction, which was really dumb. And then, uh, Gamma had to uh, run from, not run from, but he had to make it to the goal, or make it to, like, basically beat the stage within the time limit. Uh, there's not really much to say except the game does gameplay wise it holds up but like visually it does not. The story looks janky. And it's bad when games like Mario 64 or Crash Bandicoot do the animations better. But yeah, that leads us into Sonic Adventure 2. So Sonic Adventure 2, oh I like that picture, but Sonic Adventure 2 was directed solely by Izuka apparently, huh. Yeah, it's um, known for, uh, by a lot of people for having the best story, even though there are glaring plot holes towards the end. Uh, it introduces two new characters, Shadow the Hedgehog and Rouge the Bat. Um, Like, it has a couple new moves, like Sonic Rolling, kind of like Sonic Adventure uh, 1, and this, oh, I forgot to mention, that that characters have um, upgrades, like um, Sonic gets um, the light speed choose to do the light speed attack, but this game kind of improves on that, or, or not light speed attack, but light speed dash, but yeah, this game improves on that. Because before Sonic just had to hold the uh, the spin dash button and then 
get in front of a trail of rings to use it. You have to just tap it this time. Yeah, and it's not that bad. But um basically um every character is kind of parallel because the prep or at least the trailers, not trailers, the commercials was basically like, you're gonna save the world, you're gonna conquer it. So you got Sonic vs. Shadow. Like, they play identical except Sonic gets more moves. Then you got Tails, who's in, uh, who's using his plane as a mech. And Eggman, yeah, he's played before the first time. And I think Eggman gets more. Uh, do not quote me on that. But then you have Rouge and Knuckles. And they basically took the core goals from um, Sonic, Knuckles, and Gamma. So, Tails and Eggman are the Gamma stages, while Knuckles and Rouge are the Knuckles stages. Yeah, they... The vi game visually looks really good. And, of course, the, like I said, the, stor the story it's just like one of, it's one of the best in the series, if not the best. People just love it. Cause the game the story starts off lighthearted. Um, but then it like towards the end it gets kind of dark, gets into government conspiracies and stuff, shadows past. Just really interesting stuff. Yeah, and the it it plays just like Sonic Adventure 1. Except improved. So, yeah, this right here, though, is the high point of the series. And now, let's go to where things start dipping. Oh, yeah, before I um, get into this, this is also where Sega starts releasing. Like, after Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2 was the last Sonic game on. Um, the Dreamcast, and they, like, it's like, either 8 or 11 months later, Sega started releasing it on the GameCube, and they started just doing other consoles, but yeah, starting after that, they started, um, yeah, they put it in Sonic Richard 2 on there, and then they, like, started making games for, uh, like, the Game Boy Advance and stuff, like Sonic Advance, but... Starting with Sonic Advance, they start basically making a whole bunch of spin-off games that uh, that kind of flesh things out. But yeah, Sonic Heroes. This basically everybody has four different. There's four different teams, characters, um, characters move. On to um, like everybody does the same stages. Uh, everyone has like, there's like a special meter that what people can do their uh, what's it called? Team blast, I think that's what it's called. And everyone's team blast has different effects. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know how I was talking about how important. I guess I didn't really say this, but I, m I might have. Sonic Adventure kind of streamlined the story, such as making Eggman's, like, his act, his American name, his full name while making Eggman, which was his Japanese name, a nickname that everyone uses. Um, like, okay, story-wise, the most important characters in the series at this point, are Knuckles and Shadow. So Knuckles connects Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Shadow connects everything else. So he has a little mini art going on. So in Team Dark Story, basically, Shadow comes back after he supposedly died in Sonic Adventure 2. And everyone's like, is he, uh, is he a clone? Is he a robot? Like, no one knows. This series introduces 
Cream the Rabbit, who was actually first introduced in um, Sonic, Advan uh, Sonic Advance 2 as a new playable character. You get E-123 Omega, who I guess is the last of the E-100 robots. Yeah, and I guess this doesn't really matter, but there are some Gamma robots in um, Sonic Adventure 2, but they're actually called E-1000 robots. But yeah, E-123 Omega's new to this. Big comes back, and then they also reboot um, Espio, Charmy, and Vector from, uh, from Knuckles Chaotix, who are just known as Team Chaotix, and they're detectives. Yeah, so they are completely rebooted. But yeah, everyone goes through the same 14 stages, or if you want to get technical, it's more the same 7, uh, seven uh, stages with 2 acts. But yeah, the 14 stages. The bosses suck. Every single one of them. Yeah, I mean, the Egg Emperor is fun, but if you're playing like Team Sonic, all you really gotta do is level Knuckles up all the way and then just keep punching and he'll like punch the ground and make fireballs come out, which instantly hits him. Yeah, this game changes a lot of stuff. It's the first Sonic game to introduce health bars. Yeah. Yeah, um, the characters, there's, they're uh, split into three categories. You have speed, flight, and power. I guess you could say it's the first Sonic game to do that. Yeah, Sonic, speed, obviously. Uh, flight, they go going through this weird flight formation where the person's, like, flying all the time. But you can, like, jump with them to make them actually fly. By flying all the time, I mean... They're like at the top, just like kind of hovering there, and they only lose stamina when you uh, actually try to gain altitude, or gain altitude and move. If you like gain altitude, um, like your bar doesn't go down at all. And then power basically is to beat up enemies. Yeah, so this game has a lot of fight sequences. Yeah, and the, and the bosses basically stem from um, basically run, um, running after the boss and trying to do um, attacks or character battles, which suck because they suck in every game. Or um, basically a gauntlet where you end up fighting a whole bunch of robots. And this is also the first 3D Sonic game where you actually have to try to earn the Chaos Emeralds. But yeah, this game, I enjoyed it, but it's not as good as Sonic Adventure 2. And then they, um, they basically room, they basically made the story more streamlined, even though all the characters are going through the same worlds. Yeah, like, they tried to make it more like a classic game. So there's like no humans and stuff other than Eggman. Um... Uh, but yeah, there's also a whole bunch, like a lot of extra modes that no one ever plays. And this game was directed by Takashi Izuka and Lainey Manella. The heck, Lainey Manella, but is the voice actress for Rouge at this point. Okay, so like I was saying, they they were coming out with they were basically coming out with a whole bunch of stories and expanding expanding the world and like I said before Shadow and Knuckles were the kind of the driving force and one thing I need to mention though is Sonic Adventure 2 is the last time we see Knuckles doing his job from now on he'll go on adventures to quote unquote help Sonic okay so then we have Shadow the Hedgehog This game is a mess. And Shocker, directed by Izuka. Huh. Okay, so. Yeah, this game chronologically takes place after um, Sonic Adventure. Or not Sonic Adventure, Sonic Heroes. 
Because remember I mentioned that Knuckles, or not Knuckles, Shadow was um, trying to figure out whether he was a robot, android, um, a clone. This game basically answers that, and it gives us a revelation. He's half alien. Yeah, you find out about Black Doom. This is the first Sonic game to have the Sonic, um, the Sonic X cast. Because originally, originally we were told that the whole cast got replaced because um, Dean Bristow, the uh, original voice for Eggman, passed away. But apparently, they were they were planning on replacing the cast like before he actually passed away. So that's interesting. So we get like Jason Griffith as both Sonic and Shadow, like cussing a lot. Got Sean Chamel as Black Doom. Yeah, and of course we got a couple memes from it, but the game controlled poorly. It was like kind of slippery, like Sonic Heroes. They gave Shadow some new moves, like Chaos Blast, and. One thing that people talk about is that Shadow uses guns in the game. But they're like, it's weird. But apparently, according to Sega, people have been asking for Shadow to use guns forever. And then turns out, we also learn about Eggman's grandfather. Because in Sonic Adventure 1, or not 1, uh, Sonic Adventure 2, Gerald Robotnik was, um, basically, he went crazy and he wanted Shadow to basically kill everyone. But in this game, Shadow, like we learned that he was like actually a benevolent scientist before the government screwed him over. Yeah, so... Yeah, when I played this game for the first time, and I played on PS2, which was probably the worst version of it, I said, this cannot get worse. Okay, and then, boom, it got worse. And as soon as I find it. Okay. There we go. This game. Oh, and this was directed by Shun Nakamura. And he was the story guy, too, apparently. This game, I don't know what you call a five game trilogy, or not trilogy, but five game like story series, but what, like I said before, and I, I mean I said a little bit ago, but I'll say it again, and Shadow and Knuckles were the most important people, like Knuckles basically got replaced with, Sh or by Shadow, so this kind of ends Shadow's arc, cause, in Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow wanted to kill everybody because of Maria. And Sonic uh, Hero, Shadow is actually alive, and but we're not sure if he's an android or not, or clone or whatever. Were these real? And Sh uh, Shadow the Hedgehog turns out he is real. And he's part alien, and like he has to kind of. Um, basically forgive the government for murdering Maria. And then, in this game, he's actually working for the same people who murdered Maria. But you know, that was 50 years ago. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, this game has a, has a strange story where basically they gave Sonic a human love interest, which is an old concept from when he was first created with, um, what's her name? Madonna. That was her name. Yeah, except this one's name is Princess Elise. Uh, they redesigned all the characters. The, the idea was, what if Sonic lived in our world? Yeah, it was weird. And, um, this, instead of having a whole bunch of like campaigns like this is actually one thing that I give the game credit for and like in, in Sonic Adventure 1 
which this game is trying to be Sonic Adventure 3. In Sonic Adventure 1, you, when you play a different character, you end up doing the same um, boss fights and stuff. First off, that only happens a handful of times in this game. Yeah, in this game you have three characters. You're introduced to... Oh, we're introduced to a new character named Silver the Hedgehog. And we're introduced to Blaze the Cat, who was actually introduced in Sonic Rush. And Sega apparently forgot that she um, was in that game and had a completely different origin. So, yeah. Um, uh, all the characters were redesigned to be like Tumblr. Because again, the story was, or the concept was, what Sonic is in the real world. Eggman looks like a realistic human, but still looks cartoony. Yeah, we got Lacey Chabert voicing Princess Elise. Yeah, and I actually really like her in, uh, as uh, Gwen Stacy in Spectacular Spider-Man. Wish that show was coming back, but it's never going to. Um, but yeah, the game was unfinished, unpolished, when, like, in the middle of development, this is when Yuji Naka, uh, Yuji Naka quit. And he quit, uh, Sega, in the middle of development, so who knew what, like, what he was doing? Yeah, because I, th I would assume he was, like, director or something. Or producer, I'd say. But, yeah, the game is super glitchy. But yeah, one of the things that um, I really like about this game, I mean despite all the negatives, is the fact that, and this is kind of a problem with the um, older, the other games, because in those games, Sonic, like if, like if the games, uh, the stories end, like Sonic Adventure 2, only one of those, like, the way the game would end is you complete everyone's story, and there were kind of minor contradictions, and then, like, after you complete everybody's stories, then you have to do the last story. And by minor contradictions is the fact that, so in Sonic Heroes, Sonic's team, Shadow's team, Amy's team, and the Chaotix fight, they fight the Egg Emperor four times at the, four, at the same spot without encountering each other. And then, like, Amy's hitting Sonic and, like, chases after him. And the Chaos finds Eggman, and Shadow's team finds the um, room full of Shadow clones. Like, it makes, it makes no sense. Or the fact that in Sonic's ending, or the hero ending for Sonic Adventure 2, Shot Sonic jams the Chaos Emerald into the um, Eclipse Cannon, like making it blow up or whatever. Which obviously didn't happen because if that happened, then the last story wouldn't happen. Yeah, this game, the endings for each of the um, the stories has no contradictions. Yeah, there were certain parts of the story that didn't make sense. And another cool thing, though, is we got the best use of Chaos Control. Yeah, <laughs> so that was, like, people love talking about that. But yeah, sh here, Shadow's story is done. Okay, and because this game sucks, so, um, and you just not left, they decided to remove the, um, the adventure, the adventure formula and go to, um, like create a boost formula. And that leads us to not underground. Sonic Unleashed. Okay, Sonic Unleashed. Ooh, it was directed by Yoshihisa and Hashimoto. That's a new name. And this is also the the last mainstream game to have the uh, four kids cast. So they removed. So this is the also the this game introduces a couple new characters who we'll never see again, such as Chip and Professor Pickle. Um, Sonic and them 
go back to their to their original like modern designs. This game adds a new gimmick. Okay, mind you, gimmicks are kind of a thing that they do, obviously. Yeah, the game kind of doesn't explain itself really well with the whole Werehog thing, but it's explained in the Japanese manual, apparently. Okay, and I don't know if this is the first, but the writer for this game is a woman, and people actually really like the story. Yeah, I've never beat Unleashed, but... Uh, yeah, the gameplay the gameplay has what I like to call a punch gameplay, where they expect you to react in a split second. Uh, but yeah, this people were were referring to this as the revival of Sonic because it did it was a Sonic 06, it didn't suck. Okay. Yeah, there's I mean not really much to say about it. Other than the game focuses on the relationship between Sonic and Chip, Chip's like true identity. I mean, yeah, it, the, the only like main characters here are Sonic, Tails, and Eggman. Tails is relegated to explains everything guy. And yeah, this is a, kind of also the, the last full production Sonic, like, main series game. Now, I'm not going to talk about the Sonic Episodes 4, but after this was Colors. Yeah, this um, kind of redefines the, um, it redefines the uh, Boost gameplay. There's not really much to say. It's a smaller scale game than than Sonic 06. Not Sonic 06, Sonic Unleashed. Like, by a lot. And the first, like, one or two stages are in full 3D. But even though it uses the boost gameplay, it focuses more on, like, problem solving and stuff. And most of the games in 2D. The other so apparently this game was directed by Takashi Izuka and Morio Kishimoto. Yeah, so two directors. And this is the first time that the um the current cast, I guess sans Kate Higgins, because Kate Higgins isn't doing the voice of Tails anymore. Um, yeah, she got replaced by it's kinda of funny because she voices Sakura and Naruto. She got replaced by the girl who voices Eno in Naruto. Yeah, but their voice is kind of like a better version of uh, what's that girl? Lisa Ortiz. I think that's her. The, the girl who does the voice for did the voice for Tails and Sonic X and all that. Oh yeah, and one more thing I forgot to mention in Sonic Unleashed. Um, like that was probably Jason Griffith's best performance as Sonic. That's just my opinion, though. But yeah, this is the first time that uh, Warren Graff and... Uh, not Ken Penders. Ah, uh, Ken Pontac. Yeah, Ken Penders is someone completely different. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Warren Graff and Ken Pontac is the first time writing for Sonic. This game consists of a lot of really, really bad jokes. Yeah, it introduces two new characters, Orbot and Cuba, who serve as Eggman's lackeys, who are basically like, um, Scratch and Grounder from the old Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon. Um, the Dingo and Wolf character, I can't remember their names, from Sonic Underground, or, uh, Deco and Boko from Sonic X. Yeah, they're just those characters. Yeah, so, this game doesn't really offer much, but it's still better than 06. People love it, I do not. So then, we go to Generations. 
which is the best boost form in the game. And this game was directed by Hiroshi Miyamoto. And again, written by Warren Graff and Ken Pontac. This is a another smaller scale game. There's a whole bunch of extra modes or extra game, extra mini games to help progress the story or progress, not story, but progress the levels. The story is non-existent, so don't even know why they have writers. <laughs> Yeah, this game brings Classic Sonic into the uh, fray, making him a character. Classic Sonic is basically Sonic from the past. Uh, what else? Classic Tales comes back. Or comes in there. Yeah, with no explanation. Uh, what else? Yeah, it, this game improves the, um, like the quality of the boost point. I didn't care for the Blitz Formula gameplay up until this. And they're. And these guys are such bad writers that they literally reuse the same joke. Because in Sonic Colors, mind you, I played Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations back to back when they came out. So I kind of noticed. In Sonic uh, Colors, Cubot basically says something about Sonic Beats Eggman all the time, like it's his job or something. And then, after beating the uh, Egg Dragon, Sonic makes the same joke to Classic Sonic. He's like, seriously, dude, we beat him all the time. It's like our job or something. Like, no. No, that's just terrible. But, the, but yeah, this game basically pulls um, levels from um, all the main Sonic games up until this point. I mean, not including Shadow, but like Sonic 1, 2... Um, and Knuckles, CD, well CD was just for the uh, Metal Sonic boss fight, Adventures 1 to the Heroes, and um, 06, um, Unleashed, and uh, Colors, and it, like there's a, the Act 1 is Classic Sonic, Act 2 is, uh, general, is uh, Modern Sonic, Oh yeah, this is actually where Modern Sonic gets his name, Modern Sonic, too. <sighs> but... Yeah, this this game, if anyone's gonna say, Oh, this Save the Sonic series, I would say it was this one. You know, ex excluding the poor st or the non-existent story. But then we get... Uh, Sonic Lost World. Now, interesting thing about this, this is the first game where Ken, or it's the only game so far, to my knowledge, that Ken Pontac and Warren Graff wrote the story themselves. This game is, is directed by Morio Kishimoto. Okay, so... Um, the villains are terrible. A lot of people call them the Not-So-Deadly Six, which is hilarious. Yeah, the they probably would have been cool. There's a YouTuber I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Who made a video talking about how he would fix the Deadly Six, and like his story, his idea was just interesting. But yeah, you have basically the crazy one, the fat one who likes to eat, who's dumb because apparently fat people who like to eat are, are dumb. Apparently, the leader, the Chinese master. The emo and the girl. That's literally the personalities. This game um, gets rid of the uh, booth gameplay and does them completely new. Yeah, it just seemed like they were trying to do whatever they wanted. Uh, what else? The sto like again, Warren Graff and Ken Pontac wrote the story. They apparently wrote themselves into a corner by killing Eggman. So they brought him back out of nowhere. Yeah, they said that in an interview. I mean, there's really not much to say about it. Except again, the, I mean, they brought back Knuckles and Amy, kind of. Tails is still meant to explain everything, guy. So he doesn't do anything. 
well, yeah, this game has more story value than Colors and um, or not, just Colors and Generations. And then we get into the last newest one, which was uh, Sonic Forces. Yeah, this game brings back classic Sonic, who they completely retconned. So he's not Sonic from the past, he's Sonic from another dimension, which is the most stupidest thing. And oh, it's directed by Morio Kishimoto again. So that makes me, um, yeah, that makes me uh, curious. Ken Pontiac and Warren Graff wrote the script again. They, and I think, um, Makoto Goya wrote, like, wrote the actual story. Like, the Japanese story, and they adapted it. A huge problem with the story is the fact that, or at least in English, is that, um, what's, his, what's the name? Ken Pontac and Warren Graff tried to make the story more edgy. So in the Japanese version, basically, Sonic, um, Sonic was missing. And like, I guess Sonic and Tails were missing. Yeah, but they basically made it that Sonic was dead and then Tails lost it. But Tails, obviously he didn't look like he lost it and they found out Sonic's alive like instantly. Like two or three stages into the game. This game has a create a character mode where you can create a brand new character that aids Sonic. Yeah, who he would just call the custom hero. It introduces a new villain called Infinite, which uh, some of the stuff involving him doesn't really make sense. But he has a really cool theme song. Yeah, he could have been a really cool villain if he was written better. This is also the first um, Sonic game where Colleen O'Shaughnessy, sorry if I mispronounced that, that's her first time voicing Tails in the mainstream games because. I think that they replaced Kate Higgins with her when she, um, like, in Sonic Button, I think. Don't quote me on that. But, um, this game is kind of, it used to boost gameplay, but it's kind of a downgrade from de uh, Generations. The stages are shorter. Um, it has more, uh, story, um, value. Like, um, just more uh, production value with the story. But again, the stages are really, are really, uh, short. I think, if memory serves right, I think that the game had, like, one stage, uh, lead, and then two, like, new people to do stages. Which kind of hints that they're working on something bigger. But I, I don't know. But yeah, the story for this game also kind of contradicts, or a part of the story contradicts stuff that happened in Sonic Adventure 2. And despite the fact that Eggman took over 99% of the world, the United Federation or GUN never like tried to attack them. So I'm guessing Makoto Goya completely forgot that they existed since they haven't been in any game since Shadow the Hedge or Sonic 06. And then there was also a comment that Izuka made with um, Sonic Colors talking about there's two worlds, a human world and an animal world. And he's like been doubling down on that. Oh, but yeah, part of the reason I'm a Sonic fan is that it goes back to those those five games. I mean, it goes back further. Because I was watching like the cartoons and stuff. But it goes back to those five games because kind of like a series like Metal Gear Solid or, or um, Kingdom Hearts even. You play the next game to find out what's going to happen. And with Sonic, like, that's what we would, that's what we would do because through Knuckles and the later Shadow, like we knew that those those games were connected. 
And then we had the spin-off games like Sonic Advance 2 and Sonic Battle, where like it would like those would be like side stories developing the characters, but they would still be ca within the canon. Ah, <sighs> but yeah, I know that's a long. This has been a long rant, but yeah, these are my thoughts on like where the series kind of fell. One of yours. And if you like this video, or hit the like button, subscribe if you want, and uh, hit the bell for notifications. And I will just catch you guys next time. So stay tuned, and I will see you soon.